Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today I'm going to be showing you why you might want to consider spawning sea rocks on your Valheim game world. In this video, I'll be covering the pros and the cons of doing this to your world or your server. As Valheim currently stands, it's a very ship and ocean themed game. There's a lot of sailing, sometimes excessive heavy sailing. Don't get me wrong, I adore sailing, but I understand why people don't. I mean, how often are you forced to just sail directly against the wind before you get the motor power? How much of your experience do you end up just sitting in a boat? And don't even get me started on multiplayer, where all of your friends and everybody will just go AFK except the one person who's trying to not get everybody killed. I, I personally don't think that there is a good balance between land and sailing in Valheim. Valheim is over tipped towards sailing. So now I'll show you how you can change the emphasis and switch it back to being land emphasized while sailing still plays a large role because of its speed. Don't get me wrong though, I absolutely love the thrill of sailing at full speed. It really is awesome. And I understand that part of that is having to be slowed down sometimes. That's what makes this feel good. But I'm not sure that these fun moments justify the vast majority of moments where you're just sailing directly against the wind. And the Valheim world itself really accommodates sailing. It's, it's made to sail because you can't even get to the other biomes most of the time unless you've picked out a specific seed without sailing. Valheim literally forces you to sail most of the time. But maybe that's not a good way to go about it. Maybe instead of forcing players to sail, we should make sailing fun and enjoyable and useful so that people just sail. So personally, my main gripe with sailing is the length and the duration of sailing voyages. If you're sailing for two hours straight and then you crash, oh god. I mean, that that's just, it's frustrating, right? And it feels like a waste of time. So. You can set up rocks that kind of prevent you from being able to do that. You see, it's not just inconvenient. These rocks, if spawned appropriately, can enable players to build structures across gaps that they wouldn't normally be able to cross. This gives a second option. You don't just have to get forced to sail. You can build a way across. And Valheim, I mean, it's a beautiful masterpiece. I love Valheim, don't get me wrong. I have so much respect for Iron Gate. But it, it really needs ways to encourage players to build more. They're missing out. Huge quantities of players are missing out because they don't build and they don't get into building. And then they end up stopping the game because that's really the magic of Valheim. It's a combination of combat and exploration and building. In this way, you accommodate both people, the people who want to sail and the people who don't like sailing at all and prefer to build stuff. Now, you do have to spawn everything properly and make sure that it's high enough. So I'll show you how to spawn everything next. I'm assuming those of you still watching are sort of interested in doing this thing. You'll need to do a sort of surgery on your world once with a mod. So if you're playing on Xbox, this is actually doable if you get your world file onto a PC, but otherwise it's gonna be limited to PC players. And nobody on the server will need the mod, you'll only need the mod to build it the first time. That mod is the well-known Infinity Hammer. We're gonna be using it to precisely place and enlarge certain rocks as obstacles and building support in the ocean. Additionally, I recommend that you use this first person mode mod by Azumat. This allows you to scroll in as you can see here, and then you can go under the ocean and all of the water will visibly disappear, allowing you to easily determine how to spawn things. Now that you know the two mods that I recommend you using, Let's get into where you should actually spawn these rocks, because you shouldn't just willy-nilly put them in the ocean. You don't want to make something too long because it's just going to take too many resources. So I encourage you to work with the terrain. That being said, I've identified a fantastic spot. And here, this channel, this is one of those golden spots that links two long land masses together. Because you see, the spawn starts down here. All of this is pretty much connected or separated by rivers, but not this this long continent that goes all the way into these mistlands up here. So by simply connecting these with some sea rocks, players are incentivized because building a bridge will enable them to cross into a whole new world. So here we are, this is the magic spot. How are you supposed to know this is the magic spot? I mean really, think about it. It may be a great view, but this is just Valheim. 
How do you know that this is a sacred place that if you cross allows access to a whole stretch of new continent? And that's yet another reason that these sea rocks can drastically influence the late game gameplay of a Valheim world. I encourage you to Google a list of Valheim item IDs. It's going to enable you to quickly access the rocks that you want to spawn. But that being said, I'll just show you the ones that I like to use. There's also this really useful Reddit post that has visualizations of everything. I've put the link to this Reddit post in the description. It's pretty old, but it's still quite useful. And the reason they're so useful is because the ocean can be really, really deep. They really are forcing you to use boats. It's made to stop you from building. And simply by placing just a couple of these like this, that's usually enough, technically, to enable players to build. But I personally don't like how this looks, so let's spice it up and add more interesting rocks to make it look like it really belongs in the biome. This biome here is Black Forest, and you can actually see some of the rocks that we can use proudly on display already. I'll go for Hammer Rock for Coast. And it looks very unnatural if you just keep spawning them in the same pattern. So usually, every time you spawn, you should change the size a little bit, and then also rotate. You can rotate with the mouse wheel. If you hold shift, it'll change the size. And that's where we'll use these Rock 3 Mountain Assets. I love these things because they really look like jagged sea rocks, and then you can use the other rocks as sort of a frame, right? And cover them up. Something like this works fine. These are mountain assets, but by adding a little bit more detail, we'll allow them to look more natural. One thing I find quite helpful is making a lot of sort of small spikes in the area. The small rocks will make it look more natural, like it's some kind of jagged coral reef or something like that. But now, don't go too ham with these rocks, because if you do, you'll completely block access to boats. And if you catch players off guard, they're gonna crash into this stuff. So usually it's best if it's here from the very beginning. And it's always a good idea to look under the water. You'll get a better sense of what's going on. Let's put this one right about there. And now, this is a reasonable gap. It's big enough for a boat to go through without any problems, as long as they know it's there. And this can easily be hooked onto by using iron beams to build. This whole mechanism really encourages players to do more iron beam building. Now that we've spawned these simple assets, we don't have to do anything else. It's up to the players to find this. And there's a lot going on here. You can see that this is a point of interest. If a player comes across this, it's gonna catch their attention because they haven't seen this before. It's not normal, and that'll make it obvious. Why is this here? They may think it's just an obstacle so that their ships crash into something, but there's a lot more to it than just that. I personally use missions in a custom tab in Discord to give players these sort of quests that they can do. Now, let's look at doing something similar, but in a different location, using different assets. In this spot, we're bridging from a swamp to a swamp. When you're working with dev commands in the swamp, type env clear. This is gonna make it all light like this, as long as you pair it with a command like time of day 0.4. This will enable you to see easily in the swamp, which is normally a very, very dark biome. The normal swamp has these indestructible trees all throughout it. So this makes it quite easy to work with, as all we have to do is spawn some more of these trees to make a gap that people can build from tree to tree. Keep in mind, these are also all obstacles. They're gonna have people die and crash into them if they sail without knowing that they're there. Usually, players will start with some kind of basic frame that at least has a footpath crossing the whole gap, and then other people will come through, lengthen it up, drop off resources, and make it more flashy. The command to spawn these trees is hammer swamp tree 2. And then you'll need to make them significantly larger. You have to be more careful with these assets because these branches are huge hazards. <laughs> They're like spikes. Always make sure that you leave enough gap, especially with the ship's mast. You can clip through the edges, but if you get into the, one of the sides of these with the mast, it'll stop the ship entirely. So keep all this in mind as you're placing. You need gaps to cross that don't get in the way of the ship's mast. Here, for example, we have a section of bridge that may look high enough, but it's actually not. For ships to be able to easily pass under them, even when the ocean is wavy. 
And so it was extended partially here to accommodate for that. But even this isn't actually high enough if you're at the peak of the wave. That's why you might want to spawn the assets really high, giving players the freedom to build up allowing boats to easily pass by. Here's an example of a more extreme gap. You really do need quite a lot of space so that boats can easily pass by. If you make something that's just big enough, players are gonna crash into it and get frustrated. Now, if there's any way that you like to change the Valheim experience, comment below and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And if you want YouTube to show you more Valheim videos, then all you have to do is like this YouTube video or any other YouTube video or any other Valheim video on YouTube, and then you'll start seeing more of them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.